Thanks for sharing your garden with us. And now we're going to turn our attention to one of my favorite topics, which is wildlife gardening. And I'm joined by Alice Nance with the City of Austin Parks and Recreation Department, where she is the Wildlife Program Director, Conservation Director. And great to have you with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, you used to be with the National Wildlife Federation, and in that in that role, you were encouraging people to uh, take on the idea of creating backyard habitats. That's right. And I started as the backyard wildlife habitat intern and then became the education program manager. And my job was to educate and raise awareness about the importance of creating wildlife habitat. Well, now you're trying to do that on a kind of a grand scale. Now, real briefly, describe the city initiative to get not just individual homeowners, but entire neighborhoods to be thinking about that. Well, about two years ago, the city of Austin decided that it wanted to become one of National Wildlife Federation's certified community wildlife habitat cities, which now there are 30 of these uh, communities, and Austin is number 25. And so and that started the um, shift toward trying to get the entire city on board with creating landscapes for wildlife in individual backyards, at schools, businesses, places of worship and we had to get a certain number of habitats certified and we had to do community projects and um, lots of education related activities as well. Well, the good news on all this is uh, that gardening for wildlife is such a joy. Then I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to be involved in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It's a pretty easy sell. <laughs> um, I mean, what more could you want than a yard bustling with lots of life and activity and beautiful flowers? I, actually, Allison, I have to say this is true, that my favorite time in the garden is in the winter when the leaves are off the trees here. We have so many bird visitors coming through and uh, you know the goldfinches coming down from the north, etc. I just love the winter time and it's the birds and it's the wildlife really that make the difference for me. Absolutely. And it's the songbirds and hummingbirds and butterflies that most people are interested in trying to attract. Mm -hmm. And so there's some good strategies for that. And so let's spend some time giving people ideas about that. Now, there are five kind of principles that you like to talk about when you yes. talk about uh, gardening for wildlife. Let's start with one that may not be the most obvious. So that's sustainable uh, gardening. What do you mean by sustainable? These are one of the five principles that you try to get people to embrace. Right. So sustainable gardening is essentially gardening using less resources, um, not having as much of an impact um, on the overall environment. And so the National Wildlife Federation has outlined um, a list, a menu, if you will, of sustainable gardening practices that we hope that you're incorporating into um, your gardening. And so you have to do at least um, I believe two of those mm -hmm. um, sustainable gardening practices. And so it's things like using plants that are drought tolerant or mm -hmm. maybe zero scape plants, composting, mulching, you know, watering in the morning or in the evening, using U drip irrigation. Using fewer pesticides and herbicides. Eliminating yes. <laughs> fertilizers <laughs> and pesticides because if you want to have butterflies, you need to eliminate right. those pesticides. Right. So there's um, a variety of sustainable gardening practices and all of it is um, with the idea of just being a little bit easier mm -hmm. on on the land. On the other side of the equation, uh, in terms, I mean, those sustainable practices all are, I think, great common sense, really. And mm -hmm. you, if you want life in the garden, you know, use the, the kind of wise steps in terms of encouraging it or, and not discouraging it. But uh, getting the, the, the attracting in the wildlife is the other side of that. And there are a lot of things that you need to do to keep in mind that are really going to be successful strategies. Mm -hmm. And I think number one, which may not be the most obvious to a lot of people, but simple, is water. Absolutely. Water is the key element. It's the element that most people are missing. Folks might have everything that they need. They might have the food. They might have the cover. They might have the places to raise young. They might be doing all those sustainable gardening practices. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have water, you can't have an <coughs> official habitat because that's the key ingredient for mm -hmm. any wildlife landscape. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's a bird bath, Mm -hmm. um, or a pond, either one. You need to have some element in there, like that in there. Right, and uh, providing water, like you said, can be quite simple or can be a little bit more um, elaborate. And mm -hmm. so having a simple bird bath, 
um, that's accessible to, to birds is um, you know, an easy way to provide it, having different levels of water in your landscape. Mm -hmm. So having a bird bath maybe that's elevated, coupled with you know, a water source that's on the ground, whether it's a little python mm -hmm. or it's a um, saucer or something mm -hmm. of that nature. But the key is, is that whatever water that you're providing in your landscape, it needs to be accessible and, and usable by wildlife. Yeah. So nothing too deep. So sometimes people have these troughs of, right. um, you know, Put some water. gravel in the bottom. Yeah, putting rocks mm -hmm. and, you know, making it so that it's um, gently sloped or um, where birds can come and light and be able to take a bath and right. you know so always thinking about ways to make it you have to think like a like a bird or think <laughs> like a lizard and right. that's how you know they are more easily able to I, use the I, water. I put a bowl in my garden and and it was funny this past summer I wouldn't every day I'd see the birds enjoying it during that horrible drought and they'd get in there and they'd take their baths they'd drink from it and every evening the raccoons would use it to kind of clean up. Mm -hmm. I would see that they'd used it every single day. I would dump, dump it out, re refresh it, and it was, it was a lot of fun, and it really worked. It was the most important thing in the garden out there to the critters, I think. And, you know, ponds will attract even larger <laughs> wildlife. Um, some folks have reported, you know, having, you know, blue herons coming and oh, fishing. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, so if you have some sort of water feature, a pond, and you have koi mm -hmm. um, fish, and you have herons nearby, mm -hmm. which if they, if you are providing a pond like that, the, the birds and herons and other species will come and find it. So something to keep in mind, depending right. on the size of your water source, you will probably encourage larger size right. animals. Well, food is another essential, and um, that comes in all different forms. Yes. And so, you know, sometimes when you think about wildlife and birds, you think about bird feeders and mm -hmm. supplemental feeding and oh, let's go buy bird seed for the birds. Mm -hmm. But really the best way to provide food uh, for wildlife is through plants and not mm -hmm. just any old plant, but native plants, uh, plants that um, have you know been there for thousands and thousands of years and have co-evolved with uh, local wildlife to be able to meet their uh, nutritional needs, etc. So native plants are the foundation of any uh, wildlife habitat. Yeah, plants with berries, plants with seeds, you name it, plants with nectar. Yes, nectar, pollen, sap, mm -hmm. um, leaves, buds, you know, if you think about all the things that plants provide, it really is quite uh, a medley of food mm -hmm. sources and so and you want to provide food throughout the season so you want to have some kind of food either blooming fruiting bearing providing acorns etc uh, throughout the year right well there are two of the essentials that I kind of think of in a similar way which is, one is cover which is places to hide Mm -hmm. and also places to raise young. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, in my mind, those kind of go together. They go together and, and they also go together with food because essentially our food sources, all these plants that we're talking about, right. also provide cover. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way is through um, actual plants. So specifically evergreen plants are key because they provide uh, shelter during the, the winter and provide year-round kind of hiding mm -hmm. or cover areas. Um, cover can also be a brush pile, it could be um, a hedgerow, right. it could be a rock wall, it could be mulch. Right. Um, places to raise young can also be um, plants, etc. Um, one thing that comes to mind would be providing larval host plants for butterflies in your landscape. That counts as a place to raise young for mm -hmm. um, butterflies, um, but also providing, if you have one, a dead standing tree. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's not so appropriate in an urban environment, but certainly folks that are in a more, more rural setting mm -hmm. might be able to afford to girdle mm -hmm. a large Chinese tallow or china berry <laughs> or something <laughs> um, and, and leave, it, <laughs> leave it as a, as a dead standing tree, um, especially ones that have cavities. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the opportunity to, you know, buy nesting boxes mm -hmm. uh, so that you can kind of be a part of providing cavity uh, cavities where they've been lost in nature. All right. Well, people can learn more about it. You've, there's a website that the city's created, yes. and that is uh, keepaustinwild.com, which is That's a right. perfect uh, phrase for a wonderful program. We really do appreciate you coming on board, and we hope that uh, the folks out there in the neighborhoods throughout the city and the region, really, 
will get involved in this wonderful effort. Thanks so much for being a part of Central Thanks Texas Thanks for inviting Gardner. me. It was my pleasure. All right. Coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.